Hi, I'm Enthusiastic Steve, and this is the Apollo Antenna. The vision behind this design was, one, build a portable, lightweight, easily deployable, vertical, multi-band antenna. An antenna that would perform better than its size would indicate. I could have just put a 29-foot wire along the pole, folded back the last few feet to make it fit. But I wanted to have an enhanced antenna. antenna. How much wire could I get on a modest sub 30 foot pole? I opted for around 41 feet. Then to increase its performance I decided to coil some of the wire. Nothing really unusual there. Looking further into it and how to get the maximum from this antenna, I opted for a mid coil design. The benefit of having a mid coil design is this raised the current distribution of the antenna. The centre loaded coil acted as a, also as an inductor, um, also increased the electrical length of the wire. So approximately my 41 foot wire now appeared to be over 50 foot long. So mid place coil enhanced the current distribution. The electrical length has been maximised but continues to achieve non-resonance across all the HF bands, 80 metres to 10 metres allowing the use of a 9 to 1 unun to achieve a really good usable match on all those bands without the use of a tuner. A tuner can be used just to tweak down those last few little bits of a VSWR. That was the vision and this is the result. After weeks of experimenting with coil lengths, positioning and eventually I ended up with this, the Apollo antenna. Why Apollo? It could be called many things, but in a folded state, the top section reminded me of the top of a Saturn V rocket used on the Apollo moon missions. So let me show you how to set it up. This antenna can be ground mounted or on a pole. Addition of a counterpoise wires is not essential. I've tried adding some at ground level with little or no change to the VSWR or the actual performance of the antenna. It's up to you. The coax feed will need a little a one to one choke along its length or a dirty choke uh, coax cable uh, coiled up to stop it from uh, any RF for turning down the outer braid. I've been using the uh, analyzer uh, built into my Zugi G90 to fine tune the antenna and I'll show you those results a little bit later. I wanted to ensure that I'd not just built a vertical dummy load. So conducted um, some on-air tests using a whisper, a weak signal propagation reporting tool. The antenna may perform better as a single band resonant antenna, a quarter wave design, but this is, this is an all-in-one antenna. Some compromise, but massive usability compared to others. It'd be great on FT8 or on voice SSB. Hilltop, seafront, portable antenna, You'll use it in your garden, uh, no problem whatsoever. And yes, it is also resonant across the 11 meter band for those who use that band as well. With Solar Max upon us, the Apollo is a good way to shoot some uh, skip. If you have restrictions on antennas at home, this may be the solution for you. You do not need to have to uh, have a bright red, white, and blue one like I've been designed. You could use a uh, basically you could use brown tape, green tape, or just leave it as it is, and that would blend in nicely into your garden landscape. To set it up is really easy. As you can see from the way I've put the inductant coil uh, in the center, I've taped that to it. And what I've done then, I've taped the tape around the other upper and lower sections of the fiberglass pole so they can't actually collapse in on themselves. So basically, you start in the middle, you extend the ends and uh, apply some tape to a couple of the joints and connect the wire to the unun -un and away you go. So here's a quick video of me extending the pole out. So, how easy is it to set up? Well, I'll just put the end wire through the eyelet at the top. Just uh, hook it through with a little bit of tape to uh, secure it in place so it doesn't slip out. And extend. You can just rely on the actual tightness of the fiberglass if you wish, or you can actually put a piece of tape around the joints just to secure it. But I'm just going to do this for now. And it will go out and out and out. We'll do a long shot in a shortly in a minute. I just want to show you how quick, quick and easy it is to actually get this up to where it needs to be. And if I've got the measurements about right, the wire should go about tight about there. 
So there we have it. And we can just uh, apply a little bit of tape around that joint there, just to help hold it all in place. Leave a little bit edge to make it easier to take off shortly. You can have it just straight up like that, or you can actually turn it a little bit around the pole. And then you just repeat the process for the bottom sections. I keep pushing it up and up and up until you end up right to the end, right to the bottom. There we go. And again, you can secure the wire. You can probably just wrap it around the pole a few times, or like I'm going to do, I'm just going to use a little bit of tape on the bottom section just to help secure it in place. And that way it just gives it a little bit more security on the pole from wiggling around and collapsing as such. And I'll probably put one on just the centre one here as well. Because this is where it's going to be a little bit more flex if I can find. Nope, that's fine. We'll leave it like that, I think. No, there we go. Just tighten off a little bit. Once I get it off my fingers. There we go. That goes down. And then the bottom part goes on to the unlock. Job done. So uh, using my uh, trusted Zugi G90 on the bench to my right, I'm going to uh, do some screen grabs of the little analyzer that's on there, uh, taking the measurements of the SWR across the HF bands on this Apollo antenna. And you'll soon see that even without a tuner, it doesn't need a tuner. You can use this antenna quite happily across all those bands with no tuner. Anything is slightly raised, just use the tuner just to tweak it down if that's what you prefer. But again, if you're going portable, or if you've got an older radio without a tuner, you don't, you don't need to take one with you. This is the analyzer screen on my Zugi G90. Uh, pronounce that as you will. Um, absolutely flat on 20 meters. The VSWR will vary slightly, I've found, uh, depending if you ground mount it, raise it up on a pole, uh, put it up higher away from the ground, has slight effects on it, um, but you will never ever get anything higher than a 1 to 1.6 or 1 to 1.7 on any of the bands. Similar results right across all the other bands, including that 11 meter CB band for our UK and USA users. And finally, the 10 meter band, usable run up to 29 megs. Now here are some uh, whisper shots uh, that I've done today. Uh, the bands, again, as you everybody's aware at the moment, we're, we're nearing peak solar activity. But there are so many storms out there at the moment that the bands are fairly noisy. There's a lot of relatively short skip going on. So taking that in my, into account, you'll find that these uh, whisper reports are actually quite promising. First, just a quick recap for those not familiar with Whisper, a weak signal propagation reporting tool. You send out signals at a set specific time on set frequencies and it contains digital data and that digital data is received by ground stations. Those uh, ground stations then upload uh, your information and data received by them to a worldwide database, which you can then go onto various software sites and view those results on a map or in a table format. Perfect for testing day-to-day -day propagation on all the bands or testing antennas. Now, considering these tests were done at around lunchtime here in the UK, not ideal conditions to try this on 80 meter band which is normally a late evening uh, overnight band these are the results i got not bad for a compromised antenna and don't forget i'm only using peak power of under five watts let's jump to the all the bands i did on whisper this morning and see the results as a wanna this antenna is anything other than a dummy load. Look at this, look. South America, Central America, North America, into Canada, right across Europe there into basically North of Africa. Two of these contacts really did astound me. There's one going up into the very north of Canada and one disappearing off the map itself, almost at the North Pole. Let's start by taking a closer look at that North Canada station. Turns out it's the Eureka radio station, the most northerly radio station in the world. So what about the other station, the one that's almost gone completely off the map? This turned out to be the Arctic Supply and Scientific ship, the Polar Stern. On looking up her current location, she was only five degrees south of the North Pole, right up in the ice packs. 
The polar stern carries uh, radio equipment and whisper reporting tools and can be often heard operating in the Antarctic or going between land bases and scientific stations. But this is the furthest north I've ever caught her. So am I happy with this uh, antenna design? Yes, I am. Very, very, I'm very enthusiastic about it, to be honest. It's a lot of hard work. It's taken me weeks and weeks of playing around. This is not done with analyzers. This is just done by simple measurements, uh, trial and error. Let's see if it works. Yeah, does it work? Is it hearing? Uh, are signals coming through? Which is not always easy to compare when you've got the band conditions as uh, poor as they are. But you can do it. You can use the analyzers built into the actual your radio. You can try it out on air. I have some good contacts and voice contacts. Uh, Lighthouses on the air was on the other weekend. I made some contacts on there as well. So it does work very, very well as a, as a voice, as well as uh, digital modes, etc. But it's a compact antenna, all band, HF, as you've seen, the Apollo. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'll, I've done some sketches. So if you wish to try and make one yourself, then feel free. Uh, have a go. It's all about experimenting. You might even improve upon the design. I've kind of run out of time a little bit now. So I've spent about three to four weeks on this uh, this little project. So I'm going to part of this project now. And I'm going to use the antenna. It works absolutely great in my back garden. I'm going to try it on top of a hilltop soon as well. So next I shall post up some sketches. Um, and they are sketches. Um, to try it yourself. Uh, the measurements are all approximate. Again, you might find that adding a centimetre or two or an inch or two makes very little difference or actually makes an improvement. It's a little bit of trial and error, but it will give you a starting point to actually be able to make this antenna and get on air. So this has been Enthusiastic Steve. Thank you again for very much for watching. Uh, if you wish to subscribe uh, to my channel, please feel free. Share the videos around. Uh, help me try and grow it. Um, I'll try and do videos as, as I can. Time is a little bit limited, but... There you go. It's, it's what it is. And hope you enjoyed this. Uh, there's plenty of other content out there. As I make this video, there's over 70 odd videos out there with information on everything from antennas to mast to uh, everything really. So please feel free to uh, have a look around, like and subscribe. All the very best from uh, Enthusiastic Steve.